Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Stars Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven, and I'm here with my very special guest, Maddie Beckerman. And hi, Maddie. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. And and so we were talking about um, the little boy in the film yes. and, and everything. And if you could elaborate a little bit on that storyline. Yeah, so our movie takes place from the point of view of an 11-year-old autistic kid and his video camera. And he uses that video camera almost as his, uh, his security blanket. Um, and it's based on a true, a true uh, event. So I was talking to a psychologist who had a patient uh, who was a kid uh, who had stopped speaking to the world. He was autistic. And he had really disconnected from everyone around him, his parents, his brother and sister, um, and this, you know, psychologist said, you know, let's try an experiment. Here's a, a flip camera. And this kid took the flip camera and somehow was able to uh, block out all of the input he was getting from the rest of the world and f- focus on that screen. And that allowed him um, to start, start speaking again. Uh, which is pretty powerful. So he then used that camera everywhere he went in life, um, videotaped every encounter, everything he could. Mm-hmm. But he started talking and he started speaking again. That's wonderful. Um, and that's what we base this on. It's it's, it's a really true, um, a true way of of you know making sure that the camera is going to stay on throughout the process of making this film. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, it's really interesting too. I, I believe that it's all about the wiring in the mind, anyways, when it comes down to things like that. And and I believe a lot of these children are, are very expanded in consciousness, really. When it comes oh, down for to it. sure. I mean, there are amazing cases where an Asperger's or autism is a touch of genius, where these children have the ability to do things way beyond what they should be able to do. Whether it's a mathematical inclination or a memory skill or um, these kids who have signs of autism and and Asperger's have sometimes, um, you know, almost a superpower, Mm -hmm. uh, a mental superpower. And it's, they, they might be looking in one area of the brain, but parts of their brain are so highly developed that uh, it's, it's beyond our comprehension. Right. And of course, the school system these days, it just doesn't support that sort of thing. So they need to be around the right kind of, uh, of instruction, I would say, for the most part. Yeah. I mean, there was a TED talk I saw um, a, a few years ago with a 12 year old kid um, who was autistic and he had graduated from college and he was he was disproving the Big Bang theory and physics um, in math. Oh, that's great. Uh, It was incredible. And and I watched this TED Talk, uh, and he was talking about how when he was, uh, I mean, an infant, before he could speak, he was taking his Cheerios and doing prime numbers with them. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. That's that's intellect beyond uh, any normality. And he's been, his IQ was tested and it was just through the roof. Mm -hmm, I'm sure. You know, it's interesting. It almost sounds like they have like really advanced souls that enter their bodies and the body can't keep up with the advanced consciousness. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, and this, this, uh, uh, his name is Jacob Barnett. Um, and if you look him up, you know, his parents initially, put him into special ed and put him into kind of the classes where he wasn't excelling. And that's what you do with autistic kids is, is typically, you know, they're, they're in a classroom filled with people who might have, um, you know, serious um, learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. But if you engage an autistic child or if you engage them in things that um, might mentally, that's how they grow. Putting them into a classroom and forgetting about them um, doesn't work. You mm-hmm. need to really get in there and and, and give them the opportunity to, to shine. Mm-hmm. And yes. that's what happened with this kid, Jacob Barnett, uh, was uh, his parents actually put him into regular school so he could actually learn alongside of other kids. 
they that's didn't great. put them into those special ed classes. Oh, I think that's really good. Well, these days schools are so weird anyways. I mean, my goodness, I can't believe kids have to be subjected to some of the school systems that are out there right now. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, they need some of those um, schools like in the, uh, was it the, those kids, those superhero kids, hmm. X-Men. You got it. Yeah, that's more kind of up my alley. <laughs> Let's Absolutely. start telekinesis like 101. Indigo, indigo children, right? Yeah, there you go, for sure. And and so far as those abductions go with the Brown Mountain, didn't that start like in like around 1914 or something, or was it earlier than that? That was the first known uh, news report. Uh, uh-huh. So that was in the Charlotte Observer, uh, which is the you know Charlotte newspaper. Um, there was a report of the Brown Mountain Lights and of it chasing people. Now, it's been talked about way before that, but this is the first actual news report on it. Mm-hmm. That's still pretty early, though. It's very early. Um, yeah. And the, you know, I mean, it was talked about all the way back to George Washington, and the Cherokee and, and Catawba Indians have a legend there. Um, but what's funny is that the Cherokee don't have a written history, it's all oral, it's nice. all passed down from generation to generation. And, you know, there's never anything definitive there. Right. I wonder why that is, though. Do you think maybe it's because um, the text, the written word, sometimes gets skewed and edited? You know, it could certainly say that for our own uh, history. Exactly. If, yeah. if you look at our, our Bible or, or anything like that, it's certainly written by men hundreds of years after the fact. Uh, mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a whole other topic we could talk to uh, talk about for like three or four hours. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, you'll be back on my show again. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? All that censorship and all that editing. It's almost shameful because there's so much information that's probably been censored and people are missing out, you know? All those components are gone. So yeah. they're putting pieces yeah, so, together. It's a really lost history of the uh, Native Americans. Mm-hmm. It really is. But, yeah, there yeah. are stories passed down, passed down from generation to generation. And the things that they took as daily life um, – which is the mystical or the paranormal or the, um, the basic connection that we have to the earth, uh, and nature, uh, is something that, um, we just are just starting to dig into as a society. And they've had that forever. Right. Yeah. They've been in touch with their star ancestors for a very long time. So that's why I believe that whatever's going on at that Brown mountain has definite connections to that without a doubt. Even if it's getting, you know, infiltrated by by government and the underground. I mean, there's, it's pure energy, pure consciousness they're interacting with. If you ask me. Yeah, I I, I think you're completely correct. It's really I got to check it out. But um, so jo- Joshua P. Warren was the expert in so far as really um going out there and and using the scanning devices and trying to figure out what the anomaly was. Is that correct? Yeah, Joshua was was kind of instrumental in in uh, leading the research teams to come out and say, look at this, we need to pay attention here. Well, and you also in, you put him in the film too, right? Yeah, he's, uh, he's got a full interview, and, and I, he's up on my website as well, alienabductionfilm.com. Cool. Uh, his interview's up there, along with the scientist and professor of uh, physics and astronomy from Appalachian State. Excellent. Uh, they're both kind of the opposites of each other. It's like Mulder and Scully. Um, one completely believes and one completely doesn't. Really? So you do get both sides of the equation there. Oh, so he's the uh, the scientist doesn't believe it? Well, he, he's trying to put a real rational scientific explanation on it. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, he's he's got a camera set up full-time, 24-7, and... Apparently, he's captured hundreds of the anomaly, and he can't uh, explain what it is right now. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's Daniel Caton at the Appalachian State. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't released any of the data yet, but this is just over the past year he finally set up a live feed camera. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting because it's energy and consciousness. It's a real simple equation, if you ask me. If you know anything about mysticism, it, literally, we have an intelligent universe, and anytime there's an anomaly, it's obviously based on intelligent control and some form of consciousness. So you can start with that kind of a spiritual benchmark, if you ask me. Now, this is my own personal opinion. But, and that's why I can't figure out why they're always thinking, well, they have to decipher it as it has to be this and this and this, when in fact, it's, it's based on intelligent energy, obviously. It could be anything. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You know, can't put your you can't put any real basis on it. All I can tell you is that you know these things have have uh, have been abducting people and people have gone missing for centuries. Right. And it's interesting because I have not heard a whole lot about this. I mean, I just don't hear about it. So I don't know if many people have really covered the Brown Mountain to that extent. You know, it's just in the area. It's just taken as fact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not sensationalized or, or, you know, really broadcasted because people just say, oh, yeah, the Brown Mountain lights. I've seen them my whole life. Mm-hmm. And I'm almost it's just like a, a a regular day at work, right? And I'm also wondering if it, if they um, kept it kind of low key because they didn't want an attraction to the area. What do you think? Um, you know, some people do not want it figured out. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard that many times. Uh, they'd rather just you know not know. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe for the fact that it is kind of folklore and it's kind of part of their history now and then why get it explained. Mm -hmm. um, that's been, you know, one thing. The other thing is it could really be the government um, covering this up in a very tact tactful way. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't put anything past the, the covert departments in the underground. I mean, they're, they're notorious for doing stuff like that. But at the same time, we, we cannot discount the um, the multiversal celestial energies that are impacting this planet because that's happening. So it doesn't matter if they're trying to triangulate all that and use it for their own technology. And speaking of which, um, I think we discussed in the past the black triangles. Yeah. OK, you want to elaborate a little bit on those? Um, I mean, they're seen in the area, uh, the lights seem to move on their own, but the most common shape you do see throughout the Western North Carolina region is that b black triangle, mm. um, which, you know, some people say could be stealth fighters. Um, but these things are massive in size. Mm -hmm. Um, they end up looking like a football field flying in the sky. Really? They're that big? And is there a big light in the very center on the bottom? I haven't heard that, but I'm sure it's happened. I was just curious. I'm uh, just trying to figure out what they look like. So, yeah, I've seen different different pictures of them and, uh, you know, people drawing drawing the pictures. I was just curious if there was – I just get that feeling that there might be something like that, which is almost like a weapon of some kind, and that's just my own take on it. So do you think those are actually real off-world designs or do you think they've been re-engineered or reverse engineered by our own i mean look at what our stealth fighter looks like mm -hmm. exactly yeah uh, those those um those uh triangles have been seen all over the place uh if you look at the phoenix lights uh that looked like a giant one mm -hmm. and that was over the city for hours right um and who 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 says our government hasn't re-engineered stuff and and been uh, using that alien technology since that first Roswell crash? Exactly. That's what definitely. Uh, I know they've been reverse engineering crafts without a doubt. So you know the question is why are they flying them and just kind of hovering them around, almost flaunting the technology, um, letting people get awed by it? But yet there's really nothing being done. I mean they're not really doing anything with these crafts, as far as I can tell, unless they're using them in the black space program. Yeah, there's they're doing something with them. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's a lot we don't know. Yeah, it seems that way. Uh -huh. They're yep. they're absolutely doing stuff with them. I mean, we didn't find out about the SR seventy one Blackbird until like twenty years after you know it had been invented. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, we're just finding out there was a nuclear bomb dropped in North Carolina that almost exploded. Um. It was like in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was Cold War time. Sorry, I don't, I don't know the exact date. But, but this is something that just came out. It was headline news. And it was finally declassified that they almost blew up a, an atom bomb on the East Coast. So they almost did but didn't. Is that correct? Yeah, the bomb actually, the plane crashed. Uh, the bomb was dropped. It hit the ground and impacted. And they weren't, weren't well, not just one, but two. Hmm. One of them, the, um, the mechanism actually worked that stopped it from exploding. The second one, the mechanism failed. And if these two wires that were very close to each other would have touched, it would have caused a nuclear explosion. Huh. That's fascinating. 
Yeah. So there's well, so much that we don't know, uh, uh-huh. and that the is just being declassified, uh, and it it's coming out. Well, I can't wait for a guy like Snowden, or you know, WikiLeaks to uh, suddenly give us the alien declassification. Mm-hmm. That you would know, be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, when disclosure really happens. Wow. Are you familiar with, we have um, a message here from Steve Travesty. He's a, he's a producer here and host. He's asking if you are familiar with what's in our skies.com. I am not. But okay. I'm you might to want to check it out and I'll send you the link, but he has uh, apparently seen a black triangle in his backyard. that looks exactly like the one um, apparently this person's talking about was just Sean Guteau or something like that. Or Guteau. I'm sure I butchered that name and I take him in on the call, but um, it sounds like I'm getting all hosed up with Skype here. So I'll have to get, reset that Skype. We've been having issues. <laughs> so. In his backyard, he saw one. That's, uh, that's yeah. uh, uh, it's it's terrifying and like exciting at the same moment. You know, it's like, I haven't I wanna, seen one. But I want to I... see this, but uh, it's pretty freaky. I mean, I've heard a lot of accounts of people who have seen this mm-hmm. um, all throughout. You know, not just specific to North Carolina, but all throughout the world. Right. And I'm wondering, do they actually get footage of it or is some of that just photoshopped? You know, I've seen some really nice looking stuff on YouTube and, and part of me is wondering. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm, I saw one that looked really cool and I actually put it on my Facebook page. It was awesome. But I knew it was like, this has to be Photoshop because it's, <laughs> it's too good. <laughs> But well, yeah, I don't discount anything. And, and you know, also, um, I had a guest on about, you know, my last week's guest. And it was interesting. We were talking about uh, the holographic universe. And I know you and I have discussed this also. But also the holographic, um, you know, when we're seeing things coming in, uh, parallel bleed through effects, possibly we might be seeing craft coming in on the holographic field. What is your take on that? Uh, I mean, yeah, you have to think about uh, interstellar travel. Mm-hmm. And you know, what Einstein had talked about, which was the Einstein Rosen bridge, uh, where you bend space and time in order to travel across great distances. Um, and, uh, I think that it, it's very possible. These craft have tapped into that technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why, you know, we, we see them momentarily or move at rapid speeds and disappear. Exactly. Yeah, they're like hopping in and out. Yeah, there's no doubt Which about is what that. I think the lights might be dimensional too. I mean, that's that's part of the thing is the Brown Mountain Lights. Um, you know, I was I was telling you a story last time about a guy who had actually physically touched one of the lights. Mm-hmm. Um, and his his experience was, uh, you know, a, a large group of people were watching the overlook, looking for the lights. And here comes one of them right up onto the uh, right up onto the highway, and almost the entire group ran away. And you know he gets out of his car, and everyone's yelling, "No, don't go!" And he walks right up to it and puts his hand into it. Mm. And there's two different descriptions: one that he told, and one that the people who actually were with him told. And his experience was, he said he felt like he was putting his hand in an electrical socket and he was being electrocuted for about four seconds that's the the amount of time that he thought this was happening for Mm -hmm. Uh, the people around him said he was like holding stiff as a board for more than four or five minutes they said it might have been as long as 10 Mm. Uh, but they were freaked out to touch him and uh but that just goes to show you you there's a time differential Mm -hmm. uh, going on you know within the people who are seeing this oh yeah he was uh, i think we've also discussed that he was in like a stasis almost Mm -hmm. in between worlds that's really wild now do these lights do they wink out uh what they said around him was that the light was about eight feet and that when he put his hand into it it shrunk uh as he as if he was draining the energy with inside of it oh that's interesting it almost browned out. It was like getting smaller. Hmm. Uh, and then as soon as he took his hand out of it, uh, it got big again. Oh, so he was actually drawing power from it. Yeah. Oh, cool. I mean, that's what it seems like. That's, I mean, that's from what it the sounds like. Descriptions. That's interesting. Hmm. So we can get charged up by these things. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little you know, battery. I, I bet he never it. had to uh, uh, charge his cell phone again. No kidding. I bet he was switched on big time after that one. Did anybody ever follow up with that person? 
Yeah, I mean, Joshua Warren interviewed everybody that had been there that night. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good. Is and this is film? where this is where I found this information from. Was Joshua had um, had shared a lot of this with me. Cool, that's pretty incredible. And once again, I don't hear much about that at all. Mm-hmm. I do have Joshua coming up on my show though on uh, Dark Matter Radio. He's coming oh, up on Hyperspace, so yeah. He's great. Yeah, he's a terrific resource. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he knows a lot about the paranormal too, and and I still think there's a paranormal twist to this whole thing, or at least it seems like it does. Now maybe it's just that it affects the four body system, meaning the aura and the astral body, and maybe that's why the paranormal starts kicking in with some of these people. What do you think? Uh, I think anytime you have a vortex or a place that draws this type of attention and energy, um, the paranormal will come out in every direction. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, yeah. It affects people differently. Right. And we did talk a little bit about any type of extraterrestrial that appeared. And I believe, did you not mention that there was some kind of a little um, extraterrestrial that shows up in a craft? Yes. Um, well, there's there's a story there about um, a, a creature that they see in the woods they call Pumpkin Man. Um, and Pumpkin Man uh, is a tiny little creature that... It comes out of the light, uh, and he has a head that looks like a pumpkin. Hmm. <laughs> this, is, this is one of those weird stories oh, in the mountains. Uh, and, you know, some some people up there, maybe they've been drinking a lot of moonshine, and they see pumpkin mm-hmm. man running around. Uh, but you know, I had only heard that a couple times, that story. It almost sounds like, wasn't there a uh, some kind of a horror movie called Pumpkin Man or something? <laughs> yes, there was. Or was it Pumpkinhead? That's Pumpkinhead, that's what oh, it was. Oh, that's funny. That sounds pretty humorous. Okay, so that's what it was. I was thinking it was more like a gray, but that's actually, that's the folklore associated with, which would be that. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool. In, in the, the original Ralph Lale story um, wasn't Pumpkin Man. I mean, it was was a, uh, a typical gray. Mm-hmm, Right. You know, and the story I got from uh, initially from uh, the first guy I spoke with, it was also gray. Hmm. Grays and right. multiples. Right. And it seems to me like the grays are, are a prominent design when people have experiences. They're usually the grays. Sometimes it's the reptiles, but most of the time it's the gray. So yeah. I find that very the, interesting. The Lizzie's with their um, government conspiracy uh how they are somehow involved with the the governments of this planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's something that really has not been tackled in in mainstream culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, the entire Lizzie, you know, uh, background stuff. I'd love to know some more about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That might be something for you to to look into down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many different avenues. I swear. It's really interesting. Well, my whole take on the on the um, a lot of the my labs because I'm very familiar with military abductions is is a lot of that's a psychotronic image that they're projecting into the into the mind of the target, in that they'll they'll get an appearance of a reptile or whatever it's, they want it to be. Not that we don't have off off world species, but I, I believe that a lot of these inductions and abductions are connected to the psychotronics. So that's my own take, anyway. You're not the first person I've heard say that either, and it mm-hmm. very well could be possible. What a better way to cover up military abductions by convincing people that they're being abducted by extraterrestrials. Mm-hmm, you bet. Who the heck is going to believe that? You know, exactly. it's hard. It's hard for the mainstream public to believe that you're you're being um, abducted. But I, you know, I, I fully embrace it. I, I know these people are telling real stories. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I know. I know you're right. Yeah. When you start investigating these things and talking to people and you can tell, you know, people who are telling the truth and people who are just playing off their rocker too. So, um, you know, and of course encountering something like that might put them off their rocker. (laughs) You never know. That's very true. I mean, people are, it's, it's changed. It changes people's lives. It's, it's it's a mind altering life changing experience. Right. And hasn't it changed your life too, even for the better, right? It has. I mean, I, I'm, you know, having gone into this movie and now understanding uh, all the things around it, I'm way more open-minded. Having seen the Brown Mountain Lights firsthand and changed my skepticism to say, this is something real. I can't explain this. I can't, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get past this. Mm -hmm. It opened my mind up greatly. 
Absolutely. And I'm glad because um, I, I really hope you do do a sequel. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to work on it. Definitely. For sure. I think that would be awesome for everybody to, um, you know, engage into a, another avenue of it. And also you could al- elaborate a lot on on some of the other things that are going on over there. But I have a sense it's going to start getting more and more momentum, you know, even the environment itself in that area. Yeah. I mean, for better we're, or worse. We're getting so much feedback from around the world the movie is just opening in the uk this weekend nice uh, it was oh it opened in dubai and in uh in singapore and and uh the philippines and it's opening all across europe right now beautiful uh, and it's doing really well so you know the the amount of information we're putting out there to get people to start looking at this very real phenomenon um you know, I hope it will it will get people's attention. Oh, I think it has already. And also, let's let's let everybody know how they can actually access this film and watch it. Yeah, um, alienabductionfilm.com dot uh, com is the website. You you know you can actually watch it directly there, or uh, we've got links up there for all of the on demand services. If you've got you know cable or or satellite television, you can watch it at this moment on demand iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, all the usual suspects. Awesome. Very good. And did I ever ask you if you've had missing time? I have not. Okay. That's uh, good. Other than maybe drinking too much one or two nights in college. But, uh, you know, who doesn't have that? <laughs> so, and, and also you remember getting your tire flattened, so that wasn't missing time either. You know, <laughs> uh, Man, what a pain. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, no. I'm actually really glad that you made it. And, uh, yeah, I had opened the phone lines and Skype got all hosed up. I have to – I guess I need a different um, Skype. So apparently they did some upgrade or something and they screwed everything up. So I was trying to answer these calls and everything was getting pulled on hold. It's a long story. But anyways, I'm happy to have you aboard tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you I, coming I on. can play you my um, AAA message if that helps you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh help me it improves my whereabouts <laughs> no you're fine it's funny because i sent kathy an email too and i was like he's going on we're going live in a few minutes and i'm trying to get a hold of him so yeah. that's cute but i'm glad you made it and what a, what a pleasure it is to have you on again so thank you again for joining us oh I'm, so, I'm thrilled to be here it's always always a pleasure yeah it's really it's just wonderful to talk to you anyway it's like just talking to an old friend so that's yeah. really good <laughs> Really glad. So uh, let's see here. What else can we discuss? I know you were um, talking a little bit about what you, what else you've been working on besides that film. Um, wasn't there something else with ghosts and cowboys or something? Yeah, it was uh, Ghost Detectives. Okay. And that's about a group of like 11, 12, 13-year-old kids who have a ghost detectives club. They uh, emulate themselves off of you know, like, like paranormal state kind of. Uh, where they set out and, with video cameras and try to capture um, phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And what they stumble across is proof that Santa Claus actually exists. Oh, that's right. It's, it's tons of fun. And it takes the Santa Claus legend, and every legend is based on some hint of truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and every legend really does start from something real. And the Santa Claus mythology uh, is fascinating if you really start digging into it. The background of it uh, is is wild because really you got to think about the death of, of, of Jesus is not exactly a joyous celebratory occasion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a mass. So how did this dark, dark um, holiday suddenly turn into one of joy and light and, um, you know, gift giving? Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's based on this this mythology. Nice. And, of course, when is that coming out? I'm going to be shooting it in December and January of this year. Excellent. So we're going to shoot it in in, uh, probably the, the year after. Perfect timing, just around the season too, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it so that we can shoot while the people have their lights up and everything. Oh, cool. That's nice. I'm hoping That's... to attach some pretty big cast members, and, and I'll be able to announce that shortly. Wait, let me know. I'll, I'll definitely help you promote it. And also, is your film, the new one, Alien Abduction, on Netflix? 
It will be in August. Okay, in August. All right, excellent. Very it good. It is not now, but August it will be. And uh, uh, we did a terrific, terrific promotion with Netflix. So you'll start hearing about it there too. Excellent. Very good. And I was going to ask you about the people that have encountered these lights. Was there a form of communication established between the person and the lights, any type of telepathy or anything, messages, trances? Um, I can't say that I have a lot of encounter with that. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the people have this state of, um, complete memory loss. Mm -hmm. And I know people have tried to flash lights at them and try to see if they respond, Mm. uh, uh, and try to communicate that way with physical light. But you know, I think it would be really interesting to bring some of the people up there who can connect telepathically with extraterrestrial beings Mm -hmm. um, and seeing what generates from it. Yeah. I'll have to take a trip up there. (laughs) Yeah. If you can do it, then. Oh, I can do it. Oh, that's awesome. I'm plugged into a lot of stuff. I mean, if there's anything out there to communicate, I'll be able to tap in for sure. Um, I don't say that with any arrogance at all, but yeah, I will make a mission to go out there. I have a few friends that could do that, and I always, um, you know, I've been with them when I when we've seen orbs together. Cool. Um, and there's nothing, there's nothing fake about it. I mean, it's there. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and, and I took pictures of them, and <laughs> you know, like I, it's still there in my pictures. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those those connections telepathically, if you can go there to Brown Mountain. I just I videotape every moment of it. Please. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I will. <laughs> I don't doubt. Well, I have a bucket list and I have a bunch of destinations I, I know I'm supposed to go to. So um, that's definitely on that my list. you were told head. to go to? Well, I feel guided to go to. Let's put it that there way. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So, You're not the only one of my friends now um, who uh, are guided around the planet um, by, you know, her Octorian guides. Interesting. Uh, and. She's in Turkey at the moment doing some wild healing there. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, have, I have a couple friends that uh, are, are guided right now. Well, I think that's the way to go because, um, you know, this is a crazy world right now. There's a lot of turbulence. And if you follow spirit, you know, what I say, follow your higher self over soul super conscious, then it'll lead you to the right area, in my opinion. I've been getting a lot of pulls lately for sure. And I've been trying not to. You know, I've been trying to stay away and just kind of do my own thing up the mountain. But I have noticed that I've been getting... Um, a lot of a lot of signals. Let's put it that way. Yeah, gotta to start help, helping the world to evolve. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's why you're here tonight. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. And what I like is that you you actually have kind of bridged um, your film into the mainstream, which is good because I have a love hate relationship with mainstream. You know, with some of the stuff that they do. So this is a good way to introduce this type of you know information and anomaly in a different way, so that people can get calibrated to it. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that my, you know, my film is like, uh, it it does show it shows a malevolent side of the alien abduction experience. Mm-hmm. It's not, um, it's not like a, a a blessing type film to the extraterrestrial experience. But I mm-hmm. think that could be done, and and if this brings me there, um, to make my next movie, I do of this topic something of a benevolent kind. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's really cool. Oh, I do too. And I still believe that a lot of people, I mean, they, they like drama and they like that kind of horror, you know, a lot of people really get into it, but I also think it's a lot, it has a lot to do with their psyche and where they're at on the spiritual, you know, in the spiritual. Yeah. Uh, for a lot sure. of people like to get scared. I mean, that's the bottom line. Was that movie paranormal activity was pretty creepy though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, uh, I'm friends with the director, Oren Pelly. Yeah. Um, and Oren and I sat down, we, we watched alien abduction together. Um, and he gave me a ton of notes and I really took them all to heart. Uh, and his, uh, his perspective on doing this, what's really cool is the independent film mentality. So to make a movie like paranormal activity, it cost him $15,000. He did it at his friend's house Sweet. With, with just actors that he knew. And um, it took off like lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. 
and you know it's a billion dollar franchise now that's amazing that's incredible that is so cool pretty special oh Uh, no kidding warren is the nicest guy uh and he would you know he was nice enough to sit down with me for you know three or four hours and and really dig into an early cut of my movie and help me make it better that's awesome that's really good Isn't that amazing, though? It doesn't cost much. If you really know what you're doing, boy, you can you could make some money and, and uh, really get your message across. Yeah, I mean, our movie's doing really well, you know, all 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 over. We didn't make it for a lot of money. I mean, it costs the same amount of money to go see Paranormal Activity as it does to go see a movie like Avatar or mm-hmm. you know Transformers, which cost two hundred and fifty million dollars to make. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's just insane. Yeah, that was when we were talking about the too many com- computer, you know, graphics and all the special effects. That's just overkill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the days of Hitchcock, where, um, you know, you, you didn't have to see gore and blood and and things in order to feel terrified and to feel scared. Exactly. My movie has no blood in it. It has no gore in it. It's not, you know, you don't see people's heads getting chopped off, but you might hear a sound that that freaks you out. Mm-hmm. has substance to it in depth. Yeah, that's something that isn't there anymore. And um, Steve has a question for you. Ask him about Dark Skies and what he thought about it. Oh, you know, um, Jason Blum, who produced that film, is, is a good friend. And I was trying to get him as a producer on my movie. Uh, <laughs> and and he, I didn't know about Dark Skies at all. And he had been developing it at the same moment where when I was making my movie. And, uh, I mean, it's a decent movie. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's good. I can't, I can't say anything bad about it because I have friends that, that work on it. And, uh, you know, but it, I think it was a very, you know, typical Hollywood take on alien abduction. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, kind of the classic, um, classic look. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. Um, I think you know fi- a movie like Fire in the Sky, which is based on a true encounter, mm-hmm. is really compelling to me. Um, right. Which is why you know Alien Abduction, which is based on the real encounters of Brown Mountain, uh, really was drew me into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they elaborated a little bit on Fire in the Sky too. I think there were some scenes in there that weren't um, part of his original abduction, if I'm not mistaken. But still, all in yeah, all, yeah, yeah, they changed it at the end of the day. I think uh, that's just the Hollywood's. You know, they have to kind of make everything inflated and you know different. Of course, I, you know what's cool is I have this um, uh, alien head, cool from the movie, uh, sitting behind me as we speak. Nice from Fire in the Sky. Awesome. How'd you get that? Uh, my editor, Steve Merkovich, also edited Fire in the Sky. How oh, awesome. Yeah, that's why I hired him. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> you got that's some good good people there. Yeah, he's cool, man. He's like the greatest guy ever. He's uh, in his late 60s and uh, had done amazing films like Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, I love that film. Yeah, and it, it just like a... You know, just an amazing editor that that brought me as a first time filmmaker that experience of of all the movies he had worked on. Um, I felt like a sponge when I was with him. He was just like teaching me this knowledge and absorbing it as much as I could. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I love guys like that that have worked on movies that you know and love, mm-hmm. and and you can just take that knowledge and 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 grow with it. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, they're excellent role models when it comes down to it. Nowadays, they, they, it seems like that that um, that kind of wisdom is kind of just kind of dissipated. It's yeah, hard man, to find them. I I love making movies. I mean, I I love finding guys like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I you can tell I'm passionate about it. Oh, but. absolutely! And you have such a nice energetic too. You're just you just really <laughs> genuine person. I really like you. You and your wife both great people. Oh, yeah, thanks. you are good people, and um, I'm really glad that things are working out for you. You deserve it. So. Oh, I, hope, I hope more and more success. We're, heading, we're heading, right. heading in the right direction. We're putting out, you know, positive energy uh, and enough passion will get anything done. Yep, absolutely. And I have another question here. Are you aware of UFOs or USOs over Lake Erie? That's from Jerry. Um, I'm not. Okay. Uh, I haven't heard that before, but, you know, nothing surprises me. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to come out of the woodwork now. 
Uh, you'll probably get a lot of people contacting you about. I, I do all the time. Um, I mean, on my website, you know, people reach out to me constantly and I always respond. They send me pictures and tell me their stories. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm actually, you know, collecting abduction stories right now because cool. uh, I want to do a television series where I go out and actually study abduction cases. I think that's excellent. Hey, I did send you a copy of my DVD, by the way. Oh, you did? Great. I don't know. You should have gotten it, but if you don't, let me know. You know, I haven't <laughs> checked. I, I've been in the midst of my own insanity. That's so right. You moved. I did. I'm moving. I okay. haven't moved yet. Whatever address you gave to me is where I sent it. So just well, that one no. is a constant address. Okay, so you should have it over there by now, just so okay, you know. I heads up. Okay, just, just, yeah. so, just so you know. You'll find it when you when you do. Let me know what you think of it. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think you'll be interested. Yeah. <laughs> the anomaly part for sure. I'm terribly excited about you it. You know, the last time I talked to you on my show, we discussed that somebody had died next door and the possibility yes. that your house might be haunted, but it's not, right? No, we we cleared the energy. What uh, there was actually a murder at the house next door to the one I bought, mm. uh, and you know most people would go running from that. Um, but I looked at it as like this is an opportunity. This there's a reason why I have to go here, mm-hmm. uh, and I need to go there because I need to clear this energy, clear that that hostility that's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did. I, I think we really did. Oh, cool. How long ago was the murder, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, only a couple months. Oh, so it was very recent. Yeah, and usually yeah. they won't kind of hitch over to your house unless you're radiating a lot of energy or something. But you know, yeah. this little area, there was – oh, this is going to sound hokey and funny. But um, when I tapped into um, – I did a past life regression. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when I tapped into my higher self – I was told that there was a ton of greed that had permeated, permeated this one area. And, and I was told that before the murder happened. Hmm. And this murder happened, and it was based on a greedy a business deal that had gone wrong. Mm-hmm. And my higher self said I was going to move to this area because I needed to do something with the land in order to bring back some Native American spirit. Okay, I know I sound crazy, Mm-mm. but <laughs> not to me. <laughs> but uh, that's what I was. That's what I told myself. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, it turns out that that's exactly what happened. I bought my house uh, a month later. It wasn't on the market then, and uh, I actually did this whole ceremony up there where we built a medicine wheel mm-hmm. and. I had a shaman friend of mine come and just like, you know, create uh, a, a different atmosphere there. Mm-hmm. Excellent. That's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. I think we were meant to go there mm-hmm. in order to kind of heal the mountain. Oh, absolutely. Boogie blasting. You got it. That's good. Well, you know where I live, I have an old house that I'm living in that's predates the 1800s. But on the property, there's um, there was a guy who committed suicide. So, uh-huh. yeah, but you know what? I've never had any bad vibes. Um, never got any bad, bad energy from that. I, I, I've seen orbs though, and I've seen some other things coming in and out, but nothing ever, ever hostile or, or sad or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's such a good energy in the house we just bought. I love it. I'm, oh, like, that's I'm, great. I'm so excited about it. Yeah. Congratulations. So are you still unpacking? Uh, I'm in construction. Every oh, day. that's right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, have fun with that one. That's good. And and so and so far as your UFO encounters go for yourself, besides the Brown Mountain, have you had any really interesting encounters at all? Yeah, um, I have paranormal encounters. Um, uh, I wouldn't say regularly, but forced on me. Hmm. <laughs> um, I, uh, I have so many so many funny little little stories that end up happening to me especially since i've kind of opened my mind up to it mm-hmm. uh i guess they there's I'm, i become a lightning bolt for uh for it, different experiences now <laughs> wow well i guess that's a good thing yeah i have um an alarm system in my house and for a while Every time I would close my eyes to go to sleep around 2 o'clock in the morning, 
the ADT alarm would go off. Hmm. And specifically for one window, which is on the fourth story of our house, uh, in a closet, and it would go off and wake me up. Um, and it would go off over and over and over and over and over again. I would, I would open the window, I'd close it, I'd, I'd shut it as hard as I could. And uh, my, my, uh, my wife finally says, you know, clearly something's trying to communicate with you here. <laughs> I was like, come on, the window, the alarm going off. And what's funny is as soon as she said that, the alarm went off like five times in a row. Hmm. Uh, and That's interesting. Yeah. I, and I, and I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen at the new house, but I've had some pretty personal moments where I've, I actually have received communication after my, the alarm has gone off hmm. and has told me some things that I needed to do and actually communicated uh, a message to a friend of mine whose wife had passed away. Oh, wow. Sounds like you're really plugged in. It was, uh, it was something that had never happened to me before and it totally scared me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I was able to write a message to him um, with a very clear, something that only he would know in another language. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, it was not someone I'm even that close with. Wow. So it's even crazier that I had done this. Mm-hmm. That's very, very interesting. You know, yeah. have you ever had the lights um, dim on and off in your house at all or anything like all that? All the time. You do? Okay. All the time. All the time surrounding me and you don't have an electrical short or anything weird no i I always try to assess everything all logical first (laughs) (laughs) then Uh, you go to the next level that's wild light bulbs will start um uh making crazy noises around me really so are you interfering with it electrically or is it something else who knows that's wild (laughs) what about kathy is she the same way you know she is uh we're we're very connected and tapped into each other, but I have this crazy connection to other things. That's uh, wild. That she points out to me, and I don't pay much attention to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I try to ignore it as long as I can. But well, after five nights in a row of right when I close my eyes, this alarm waking me up. Yeah. Uh, she was like, finally, Maddie, come on already. <laughs> That's like Grand Central Station. I bet if you were to plug into everything, you'd be like really busy with all that kind of energy. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So, well, if your garage door goes up and down, be careful with that one. But <laughs> uh, Wild. Well, you can write another paranormal movie on that. I, I guess I could. You really um, could. I mean, I've had, I had something come to me when that happened, um, having – I had no idea what it meant. It was three o'clock in the morning. My alarm went off, uh, woke me up. And finally I said, what do you want out loud? I said this, I said, I'm trying to sleep. What do you want? And I get this flash in my head and it's this, uh, word, right. Mm -hmm. And it's air winter, air winter, air winter. Mm. I'm like, what the hell is this? What is air winter? And uh, I wrote it down, and I find I went to sleep. And I woke up in the morning. I told Kathy what had happened, and uh, she starts googling it, right? Mm-hmm. And I start googling it. I don't find anything. She googles it. She says, "Oh my god, Maddie, look what air winter is. Just look at what it is. It's German for Mister Winter." Hmm. And if you look it up, this picture comes up of of the actual origination of Santa Claus. Oh, wow. That's creepy. Yeah. My goodness. Isn't that great? Yeah, you definitely have some, some people in your corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beings, the, whatever they are, yeah. I mean, Google. if you Google uh, H-E-R-R winter, I'm doing it now. I mean, it's just exactly what comes up. It's like the historical records of... of the real Santa Claus. That's wild. Well, thank goodness for Google, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can Google anything at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild and almost a little creepy, but I had, hey. written the, I had written the script already for Ghost Detectives. 
and none of the air winter was not involved in it at all. Um, but, um, I added it in now because of this experience. Wow. I took all that knowledge that I'd been given there and more came to me the next day. And I almost, I can't say I automatic wrote this, but there are pieces of the, of this, this next script that came to me from somewhere else. I don't, I don't discount that at all. It sounds like you're really being driven on so many levels. Yeah, this one, I was trying to decide between a few different projects, and finally this one was like, you have to do this. Mm. <laughs> this is your next one. you got to work on it. My goodness, yeah. You're really, um, yeah, you have a lot of, a lot of uh, talent. There's no doubt about it. So you were also writing, was it The Ghosts of Texas, too? No, no, that wasn't me. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind that. One of, your, one of your other guests. Okay. <laughs> no, yes, it was. That wasn't me. Oh, uh, what? Seriously? I no? I, think, I promise it wasn't me. Oh, I think you're. I think you're messing with me now. But I'm anyways, not. all right. I wouldn't uh, mess with you. I thought you were writing something about the ghosts of Texas, yeah? No. Oh, okay. All right. I'll take your word for it. Mm. I don't okay. know anything about the ghosts of well, Texas. Never mind. You'll probably start Maybe writing I about need it. To now. <laughs> Maybe you're telling me something I need to know. I think I just gave you an idea. I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting. You know, we're getting ready to wrap this up in about uh, pretty soon. But anyways, let's, let's give everybody um, – a direction insofar as how they can get in touch with you and also where they can view your movie and all that again and your websites. Absolutely. Uh, MaddieBeckerman.com. That's my personal website. Uh, reach out to me, send me emails, tell me your stories or your abduction stories specifically. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of collecting them right now. Uh, and uh, AlienAbductionFilm.com. Uh, that's where you can watch the movie. You can uh, check out everything on demand you can actually reach out to us you can see all the videos i'm talking about and, and posting about uh alien abduction film.com excellent awesome yes check it out and steve travesty i don't know what you're talking about here but hey this is what steve says tell him they just moved the stones and he i imagine he'd get it does that make sense to you they just moved the stones <laughs> is this another cryptic message at the wee hours of the night <laughs> you can blame Steve for that one. I don't know. I'm okay, not... so anyways, that's what he said. He, he thought you might understand that. But anyways, there you go. So. <gasps> oh, oh, yes. Okay. I moved my stones. You do know. I, I mean, who would have moved my stones? I got to go look. Holy that's crap. Interesting. Wow. Well, I don't chill. know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I can't even believe you said that to me. Okay, well, that was from Steve Travis. He's a producer over here. And a, a radio show host. But anyways, I'd have him join us, but it's all hosed up on Skype and we're ready to sign out. I, what we did was my medicine wheel on our, our mountainside to clear the stuff is full of stones. Interesting. It just moved the stones. So maybe that's something else. Wow, he doesn't even know what he's doing. He's channeling and he's not even aware of that. Steve? Give me some information. <laughs> he's, he's being used and he doesn't even know it. This is I'll, great. I'm going to go hike up the mountain and go look tomorrow. Wow, my... I'd love to check out your house. If I'm out in California, I would yeah, have to come please, visit. You. Come visit. Come I will. Visit. I will. You know, I was out there doing a production. I did. I did the for the uh, the eye of the remote that DVD that I sent out to you. So, yeah, for sure. I would like to visit when it's nice and clear and centered, and there's nothing flying around your house, right? It, it is L.A. It's always clear and centered. <laughs> uh, you can't come at a bad time. All right. And um, Steve <laughs> Travis, he said that was Poltergeist. The plot to Poltergeist. Oh, <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, now I do. Okay. I don't know. Do you remember that? Oh, oh, that was when they uh, moved the bodies. Right. They from, they didn't. Um, they just moved the stones, not the bodies. Just moved the stones. <laughs> yeah. Good one, Steve. I remember that. That was a good film. Creepy. Yeah, I totally Very remember good. that. When they moved, they moved the uh, the headstones, but they didn't right. move the graves. Is he trying to tell you something with that? That yeah. Oh, headstones. Yeah. That's not. I don't think your house is built over a cemetery, though. I think it's good, right? I would hope not, but but it, it would be a really hilly cemetery. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Maybe <laughs> it would be a forty-five degree angle cemetery. Well, anything can happen out there, especially with those earthquakes. You never know. Yeah. That's pretty wild. So, so anything down the the pike you want to mention, real quick? Anything you're going to be working on besides the one with the Santa Claus, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna work on a a television series with that uh, goes and studies abduction cases. Sweet. Okay. When's that gonna come out? Um, just putting the pieces together for it right now, and and my producers are awesome. Uh, 
and uh, you know, I'm just putting my team together. Very cool. Yeah. Well, but if you need my help, you know where to find my, me. You're going to be one of my team members. For All right. Sure. I'll be out yeah. there. You know it. Yeah. You're, I'll be you're, there. You're in. You're All recruit. right. Woohoo. I'm so excited. Hey, you have it here first on Raven Star's Witching Hour. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I so appreciate you coming in to the show tonight. I really, really appreciate you being here. I know everybody's enjoyed listening to you. And I wish you and Kathy everything in the world and the universe has to offer. Oh, and awesome. and thank you for, for being my friend, too, by the way. I just feel a real spiritual connection to you. So so thank you. Absolutely. And um, I think that just about wraps us up here. Is there anything else you want to say real quick before we sign out of here? Uh, just come on ahead and visit me on my websites and uh, let me know what you think about the movie. Excellent. And I'm sure they'll give you a lot of feedback on that. And let's see. I think that's just about it. And we're probably going to wait on – I think I've got maybe a minute before that rings for our, our transfer out of here, Let's shall we say. So – so what do you think? I'm going to ask you one quick question, and we'll probably get um, we'll probably run out of time. But what do you think the fascination is with people, aliens, and UFOs and ghosts? What, what do you think the obsession is? I, I mean, I think we're all connected to other planets through throughout our lifetimes. Um, all right, that's perfect. Well, Maddie, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Stay tuned for Shiny Side Out with David Dunder and Mecky coming up next to Sicilian into the night. And have a great week, everybody. And thank you.